Pete Calandra here, and today's video will take a quick look at the Spitfire Audio Originals Cinematic Percussion. These are legacy sounds ported from the original Albion library that are packaged in Spitfire's own player. If you own the original library, Spitfire gives you these for free. And at least some of these sounds, if not all, are also found in Albion 1 in the Legacy Percussion section. Before we dive in, let's take a listen to a brief piece using all three originals libraries, strings, winds and brass, along with the percussion. If you like this video, give a thumbs up. For more content, please subscribe, and to be notified, ring that bell. Leave any comments or questions below. Thanks for watching, and let's get started. So that was a piece, it took me about half an hour to put that together. I just wanted something to show off the library and all the libraries actually together. Starting off with the player, this is now becoming standard with Spitfire. And you've got the GUI here, your keyboard where it shows you where the notes are mapped on the white keys as opposed to the gray out ones. And you've got your two sliders here, one for the mod wheel and one for expression. and then. You've got this knob here, which if you click in the center, it'll show you what it's set up for. So right now, it's set up for the reverb. It also contains, for the percussion library, high pass and low pass filters, and you can see them over here. Notice that the amount adjusts in both places. It comes with two mic positions and a distorted sound. Also down here is an information panel. As you hover over a particular control, it will tell you what it is. You can also save a mix and recall it over here. Percussion has cymbals, tams and gongs, earthquake hits, metal hits, percussion hits high, percussion hits low, and swells. And to load a sound in, you simply highlight it and then click the load button. I think what I'd like to do is play that bit again when the rhythm starts and mute the orchestra, the pitched instruments. And let's take it from right here. As you can see, they're really great sounds. There's not a lot of them, but there's certainly plenty to make a track with. And let's go through some of these individual sounds. Starting off with the cymbals. You have Piatti. That sounds like a china cymbal. These are struck with a stick. More Piatti. Right, so those. These are splash symbols. Choked Piatti. A little longer. Choked symbol. Splash symbol choked. Bell. And then way up top here, really nice mallet rolls, different times. That's interesting, that one is pretty wide stereo, I'm wondering if that's two cymbals.
Some of those roles I use in a lot of my productions, accessing them through Albion One. Let's take a look at the close. And room. And let's take a listen to the distorted sound. Interesting. Now the dynamics for these are not accessible through the mod wheel, but expression will turn the volume up and down, but it's touch sensitive. It seems like either two or three velocity levels. And we're just going to move right along through these. Next we'll go to tams and gongs, and I'll show what the reverb sounds like, and maybe on these we'll look at the high pass and the low pass filter. Right, so those two are muted or choked. Scraped. Two different scrapes. More scraped. Nice rolls. That's really nice. Okay, so what happens if we have the low pass filter? Let's go to that one of those rolls at the end. Yeah, really cuts off a lot of the high end. And then the high pass filter I think will be good with some of the rumbles. Uh, some of the symbols too, you might not need all that low end information. We'll look at the reverb when we get to some of the drum hits. And again, we've got our close and our room. And let's look at quake hits. All right, lots of these. Each one a little different. This one's got a nice attack to it. A lot of low end on these, so let's put the high pass filter on these. And let's see what the distorted signal sounds like. What if I don't want the room? Turn off the reverb. Interesting, right? Let's move right ahead to the metal hits. Now these are nice because they're set up two octaves apart. So you can play two-handed. So you can come up with cool patterns. Let's turn the room down. You see, it's interesting how the room really makes the sound. Let's add some of this reverb here. Let's 
let's play around with the low pass filter. With the low pass filter, you can automate that. So you can learn MIDI CC automation. I've got a Korg Nano Control 2 here, and I'm going to use MIDI CC21, which is usually vibrato with Spitfire. So it's already set up on my Nano Control. And there we go. I'm controlling that from my fader. So you could do really cool effects like that. Let's hear what the distorted sound comes off as. Let's turn down the reverb also. These are the high percussion hits. Again, set up in octaves, well, two octaves apart. Let's listen to the close mics. does make the sound. Let's now listen to the distorted version. Let's move ahead to the percussion hits low. A really nice assortment, again, two octaves apart. Nice rumbly low things, stuff with more definition to them. close. And room. Big difference. Distorted. And moving right along, we'll go to our swells. Again, close mic. Let's add some of this reverb. You know, I actually like these rolls or these swells with the reverb here. Nice. Let's take a listen to the distorted signal. These are also useful, especially with all that reverb on it.
In conclusion, who are these good for? Well, I think this is a great resource for students on a budget that want some epic sounds recorded in a great space, really for anyone on a budget. For someone who has a resource-challenged laptop setup, the mallet rolls here are the ones that I mostly use in my productions. So with that, I'm going to play the piece out one more time. I've been Pete Calandra. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.